Okay. Today is Dafyomi. The Dafyomi for Shabbos Kodesh. We're recording on Friday afternoon. Is Kesuvos Mem Hey Kesuvos Forty Five. Today's Dafyomi teaches us the following. The following. So the Shiva cites a brisa. Tana Shiva. Shiva cites a brisa around forty-four B, two lines from the bottom. He says Shalosh Midos Benara. He says there are three types of laws that relate to a Nara. A Nara is this girl who is between the age of 12 and 12 and a half, and she is an adolescent, and in, in the case where there is adultery as it relates to her. So let's say the following situation happens. So after the Nisu and after she gets married and she's living in her father-in-law's home, Let's say the witnesses come and say, when you were back in your father's home, uh, when you were back in your father's home, there was uh, adultery. So under those circumstances, we're going to say that since the adultery happened while she was in her father's home, while she was what's called betrothed, and prior to being, prior to being fully married, there she has the law of the Nara Murasa, and she gets the stoning. And there, under those circumstances, we apply the verse, we're on the top of 45a, Soklin Osa al Pesach Beisavia. We stone her at the entrance to her father's home. Because it states in the verse, Votsiu Esa Nara al Pesach Beisavia. You take out this Nara to the entrance to her father's home. I do want to mention, let me just pause for a moment and say, I know people watch, you know, sometimes people watch us on YouTube or people hear this. We have to mention that a lot of these laws will not, you, you can't transfer these laws to today's society in any way whatsoever. These are laws that were gezeris hakosov, they are verses from the Torah. And the moment we, we can't apply one aspect of it, none of it is applicable uh, today. So therefore, this is just a uh, little more Torah to study Torah for the love of Torah and for to come closer to Hashem, but not to be applicable today in any shape or form. Anyway, that's the first aspect where she had the adultery in her father's home, but the testimony happened while she was fully married in her father-in-law's home. So then she gets stoning and she is, and, and it is done at the entrance to her father's home. And what happens when you say that, when you do that is you say to her, Komar re'u giduim she Look at what look at this child you raised that she's an adulteress. Second case, the base of via. Let's say the witnesses come while she's already in her father's home, and they say Shazinta Bevesavia. So they come while she's still in her father's home. She's still betrothed. She never got fully married. So then Sokonosal Pesach Shara Ir. So since she was just betrothed, not fully married. Averson and not Nisuin, then you then you stone her on the entrance to the gates of the city. Raji says, because it says in the verse, There you it says you take her to the entrance to the city, and that's where the stoning place takes place. But now we have the third case, Sarcha Ubasof Bagra. So this case over here, this third case is that if she is adulterous while she is betrothed and then she becomes an adult, so sarcha, so she's betrothed, she's adulterous, and then she becomes a full adult and she has not yet gotten married. She has not got fully married. So under those circumstances, tidon bechanek. Then, then if only afterwards is the, is the, do the witnesses come, then she gets the punishment of strangulation. And Rashi explains, because if she would be adulterous now that she's an adult, then she wouldn't get stoning. She would get only strangulation. The, the, uh, there are four types of death by a uh, court, and stoning is considered arguably it's a dispute in Sanhedrin, whether it's the most severe or the second most severe. But then this, the strangulation is less severe than, than skill. That is for sure. So therefore, if she would be, if she would have been adulterous now, she would only get strangulation because she's an adult. And so therefore, and the reason is because when it says stoning, the chiksiv skiwa bezinta naraksiv. When she when it says you get stoning and she's adulterous, that's only by a nara, as it states, kia nara besua. So therefore, since the witnesses only come and testify after she's an adult, 
Therefore, she also gets the strangulation because since Rashi says is the key phrase, the kibun the ishtani gufa, since her body has changed, she, her status has changed between the sin and the and the court case, or the the being brought to court. Therefore, her manner of execution is also changed to the level it is then when she gets executed. So the third case is if she sinned when she's a uh, um, a nara, but the witnesses only come when she's an adult then we're going to say she gets strangulation. The Gemara says, let's cite a brysa that contradicts Sheila's brysa. First of all, two brysas are allowed to contradict each other. So what's the issue? The issue is that Sheila's brysa was, uh, Tosos explains, not part of the normal brysas that were really studied in the yeshivas. But and so there was a more standard brysa which contradicts Shiva's source. So the Gemara raises that question. There are many, you have a contradictory source. That What does the source say? Nara murasa shezimta. Let's say you have a Nara murasa. This, this adolescent who is betrothed, shezimta, she's adulterous. Umisha bagra, shemra. And then after she becomes an adult, her husband comes forward and says she was adulterous. Who ain't no woke? Then, since under those circumstances, if he's found to be a liar, he does not get lashes. The ain't no same mea sella. And, she, and he also does not have the law of the Moti Shemra. The law of the Moti Shemra is that if he's in a, if if he accuses her of being adulterous while she was a Nara, while she was betrothed to him, and he accuses her after he gets married by bringing two witnesses, the witnesses get executed if it's false, and he gets lashes, he has to marry her forever, and he pays a hundred sela. So in this case, we're talking about a case where she was a Nara Murasa, but, but he only accuses her after she becomes an adult then he doesn't get the lashes and he doesn't pay the 100, uh, he doesn't pay the 100 sela. He, Vizomameha, Makdimu and Beis And she and her, and she and the witnesses, they both get stoning. And the Gemara says, first of all, let's stop for a second. What do you mean she and the false witnesses both get stoning? He, Vizomameha, Salvatayach, she and the false witnesses get stoning? It can't make sense. El Ohi, Ozomameha. So then one of the people are going to get stoned there. Either she's going to get stoned for being adulterous or the witnesses are going to get stoned for being false witnesses. But in any event, this Brisa says that if she was an adult when they accused her of being, when, if, 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 the, if she was an adult when the husband accused her of being adulterous, she, as a Nara, she's going to get stoning. Whereas the first source that Sheila brought that she's going to get strangulation because when she comes to court, she was an adult. So if that's the case, why in this why does she was Bryce say she gets strangulation? And in this Bryce, so we're saying where he accused her and falsely that that she's go if he if he was correct, she would get stoning. So the Gemara says Amarava. So Rava says th- there's a fundamental difference. You're you're asking a question. From the second brayso, which is referring to a motzi shemra, to the first case, which is referring to a case where, where, it where she was, where it was not a motzi shemra, where it was a, where it was a different scenario. So that's what Rabbi says. Motzi shemra commerce. You're saying you're trying to prove from a brayso that's talking about a nara who was married, uh, who was uh, fully married, and now. And, and now he's he's reporting that she was a Motsi Shamer. That's the second case. She had been betrothed. Then she got fully married to him. And now he comes and reports her after she's become an adult. So that's the that's the case of the second. Uh, that's the that's the case of the Motsi Shamer in the second Brisa. Well, that's fundamentally different from the first case, uh, which is which uh, which is which is fundamentally different from the first case. Where what's the situation? Sarko of a Sof Bigra. She was still always betrothed. She never got fully married in that first case. And so therefore it's not a case of Motsi Shamer. And so therefore you can't prove from the case of the Motsi Shamer where she gets stoning to the first case where it was not a case of Motsi Shamer. Why? Says Rabbi, Motsi Shamer comments, Shani Motsi Shamer. The case of the Motsi Shamer is different. The Chidishu, the whole case is novel. The whole ruling is unique. 
Because we the whole the whole case of the Muzi Shemer is a chedesh. Why? I'll prove it to you. Because in a situation, the nichnas alachopa. Let's say she was fully. Let's say a nara that was uh, betrothed, and then she went into she got married, which is a case she she had an suing zulo nivoa ba'alma, and she had not yet become adulteress vizintala, and then she became, and and that, this is the first case. The first case, what are we talking about? She was, the, the first price, I might have said it incorrectly before, and so follow this, that she was adulteress. She was betrothed. She became fully married. Then she became, then she was adulteress before she became an adult, but she was, she, she committed the adultery after she was fully married. Well, that's going to be chenek. That's strangulation. That's not a case of Motsi Shemer. Motsi Shemer is where the husband wants to get married. He says, you were adulteress when you were betrothed. That that's the case. The in the case where you are where you get married and then you have an adult you are adulterous while you are still a nara, then you're going to get strangulation even after she becomes an adult. Motsi Shemra, whereas Motsi Shemra, the case of the Motsi Shemra, um, somebody is bringing witnesses that she was adulterous when she was betrothed. That is Biskiwa. That's going to be a, a, a punishment of stoning. So the two cases are fundamentally different. So I'm going to Rafun and Bredu Rav Yeshua or Rava. So, so Rafun and Bredu Rav Yeshua says to Rava, Delma, but maybe this case of them, uh, maybe this case, Kichadis Rachmana, Hechli the lowest done in Gufa. So the Mara says, well, maybe we're not really so happy with Rava's answer. And, and, and so Rafun and Bredu of Yeshua says to Rava, there is, yes, it's true that there is a chiddush in the case of the Motsi Shemra. But Dilma Kichadis Rahmanwa, maybe when the Torah teaches us novel teaching of the Motsi Shemra, that's Hechadoish Dani Gufa. That's only in a circumstance where I guess the Gemara is not sure if we could really accept this Brisa, uh, the Brisa that they had in Yeshiva as authoritative, because it, first, it seems to contradict Sheila's idea. They're not happy with Rava's solution because they're saying maybe there's a problem with that b'risa because maybe when the Torah introduces the Chiddush, the novelty of the Motsi Shemer law, Delma Kichadis Rachmana, maybe when it introduces this novel law, that's only Hechid Shtani Gufa. Maybe that's only in a circumstance where her status has remained the same, meaning to say where she's still a Nara. She never became a she never became a Bulgaris. But where her status changed, she went from a Nara to Bulgaris. Maybe well, maybe the Chiddush doesn't apply anymore over there. Maybe she's going to get strangulation instead of stoning. So the Gemara says, So the Gemara says, actually the Brysos are in conflict with each other about what's the status when a girl's status changes. What's the law when a girl's status changes? If she's now a Bulgaris, does she get stoning or does she get the strangulation? Do we say that the law of Nara Marasa applies and she gets stoning even though she became an adult now? Or do we say she gets the Chenek penalty? The Tanan, because we learned in the Mishnah in, in Horios, it says we're talking about a sin that was committed by a Nasi, by the prince of the community, or the Kohen, Amashuach, or the Kohen who was anointed. Now, a Nasi, if a person, a regular person sins, they have one level of punishment, one sin offering, whereas the Nasi and the Kohen Mashuyach, if they sin, they don't bring the same carbon that a regular person brings. They don't bring the same sacrifice. So what about a situation where the person's status changes? Let's say, let's say the, the, the Kohen or the Nasi sinned before they were appointed uh, to their important position, and then they were important. In, uh, appointed so according to the first position in the Mishnah then we're going to say they're like a hedjot and they bring a regular carbon there since the sin occurred before they were committed before they were appointed whereas and that's presumably like the case of the Nara Murasa who commits the sin before she became an adult and so means to say we go to the, to the status she was when she committed the sin Whereas Rabbi Shimon says, Rabbi Shimon says, if they committed the sin if, and they knew about the sin before they were appointed, 
then chayavim. Then we're going to say they bring the the carbon like that an individual brings. But mishen is manu. But let's say they only know about the sin after they became appointed, but they committed the sin while they were still an individual. Then we're going to say peturim. Then we're going to say that they are exempt. So the Gemara says, well, one second. So you mean to say that this is Machokas Tanayim, and we're saying that according to the first position, it always goes by the status of what she was when she committed the sin, whereas according to the second position, it would be going by the status of what happened when you found out about the sin. So the Gemara says, not necessarily the case that, the, that it's the same Machokas. So maybe Rabbi Shimon is just teaching us that, that, that you also follow after the, the, the idea of when you know about it. Meaning to say, meaning to say, maybe Rabbi Shimon is saying, maybe Rabbi, we really haven't heard anything from Rabbi Shimon except. That, that somebody is saying that also at the time where you know about the sin, it's an additional factor in addition to when you do the sin. And Rabbi Shimon's other position that you need to have an action of the sin that was, and, and that's the knowledge of the sin at that state. That's what Rabbi Shimon is saying. You need to have the knowledge of the sin while you were still in that individual state. Maybe that's all Rabbi Shimon is saying. That if you didn't have the knowledge, it wouldn't be a factor. But the Azel Basi Yerdiyah, the low azil basar chata mishamasai. But do we really hear, do we really learn from this that Rabbi Shimon says we go after the sin? We go after the, the of when you know about the sin and not after the sin, sin itself. Do you do you really hear that? Meaning to say, because meaning to say, let's read the rash, because Im King, I see carbon kihashka, kidahasha mashok parvanasi sayer. So let's look at the Rashi, and Rashi will explain this idea. Amor Maybe we say the Rabbi Shimon says, Kumar Leika, there is no, there, Leika Lameimar, the Hacha, the Ishtani Karba, Mishum, the Ishtani Gufa, meaning to say that maybe Rabbi Shimon would not say here that, that, there is, that there is no carbon because the status has changed. Leika Lameimar, Hacha, the Ishtani Karba, Mishum, the Ishtani Gufa. Because from, we can't say that from the fact that Rabbi Shimon says that you're not chayev from the moment you heard you learned you learned about the carbon. From that case, Rabbi Shimon says you're potter. But maybe But maybe Rabbi Shimon's position is because we need the knowledge and the sin to both happen at the same time. That's why he says it. However, in a situation, the azo af basar yerdia, meaning to say, as Rabbi, as maybe the whole reason why Rabbi Shimon says it is because we need the knowledge and the sin to both happen while she's in the same status. But the azo af basar yedia, kol mar, look at Rashi, says, shas hachet mechayavaso kispa veshas yedia mechayavaso sa'ir. But that, but we are we going to be satisfied that that only the time of the knowledge establishes the sin and not the time of the sin itself? Meaning to say, if that would be the case, in Cain, Lysi carbon kidahashta, then Rabbi Shimon would say that he should bring a carbon according to his status right now, which is Mashuach par and Nasi Sayyir. So it's that the Meshuach would bring a bull and the Nazi would bring a goat. So we see from here from that the Brisa of Shiva that says you that says that for a Nara you get strangulation because she did the sin and afterwards she became an adult. It does contradict this other Brisa where it says that the that the fact that she became an adult has no impact on the on the on her on her law and she gets stila. So the Gemara says, so as a result of this, the Gemara says, well, maybe the Bryce of Shila is actually a an improper Bryce. So maybe it's 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 defective. Amroi Rabbi Yochanan with Tana. Tani Tido Meskila. So the Gemara says, indeed, Rabbi Yochanan said to this person who taught she was he taught she was Brysa, he said, 
Tidomiskiwa, he said, change it. Don't say she gets strangulation in a case where she committed the uh, the sin as a as a Nara and they found out about it as a Bulgaris, she should get skiwa. Ramai. Nara Murasa Murachman of the Why do we say that she gets skiwa? She's not a Nara Murasa. And this one and uh, meaning at the time of the skewa, she needs to be a Nara. And here at this time of the Bulgaria, she is at the time of the, the sewing here, she's a Bulgaria. So Amarebi, Iwa, Amarkra, Hanara. So it says, Hanar, it says in the verse, Kiya Nara Basulam Raso Ish. And then it says, Es Hanara, Tvarsha Gotsa Kabaeer. What is Hanara? Hanara Shahisakfar. If she was a Nara during the moment of the sin. So the Gemara says, how can you say, says Rokhanina to Rabbi Eli, how can you say that in a case where there's a Nara Murasa who commits the adultery, and then when she, when she becomes an adult, that he, he says the shame about her, how can the Brisa say that, that she gets stoning, whereas, uh, whereas he doesn't get, if he's, if he's lying, he doesn't do the payment, he doesn't get the lashes, and he doesn't have to marry her. If this case that she gets stoning in the case where she committed the sin as a Nara and now she's an adult, he should also get punished. So the Mara says, I'm away. So when Rabbi Hanina said this to Rabbi Lai, Rabbi Lai said, Rahmana Nitzlon God save us from this opinion. That's what he responds. Very bad opinion. But the Mara says, This is just the opposite. We let the Torah save us from your opinion. So what is Rabbi Lai saying? Why does Rabbi Lai say save us from your opinion? Time of my, what's the reason why the Torah says that the rabbis say there's a difference between the girl's punishment to slashes and he doesn't get a punishment at all if she was a Bulgaris when he lied? Because this woman, she did the action. And that's why she's liable for death. All he did was speak. And speaking, uh, speaking caused his punishment. And what's the difference? When she committed the action, she committed the action when she was in Nara. And this person committed this the sin with his lips. Amos Kamachayev, when he committed the, the sin with his lips, when did he go to court? He shot at that time. And he shot at Bulgaris. She was an adult. In the case of the Motsi Shemer, it's very specific to somebody who is in a Nara and not somebody who is an adult. So the Gemara says, where is the place of the, that the Nara Murasa is stoned? Tanarabana Nara Murasa Shazinta, if she did this sin while she was still betrothed, and after she married, the witnesses come and testify about her. So Pesach Pesach, the stone at the entrance to her father's home. Ela Pesach Pesach, let's say she doesn't have an entrance to her father's home, means to say that her father is dead or he has no home. So Pesach Sharai, they take her to the entrance to the city. Will be your Sharuba of the Kochavim to the city where it's majority idolaters. So Kunosa Pesach Pesach, they stone her at the entrance to the court. Somebody who is worshiping idolatry. You stone him at the entrance to the gate of the city that he worshipped. If it's a city which is the majority idolaters, you, you stone him at the entrance to the court. Menani, Mili, where do you learn this idea that you that you stone the sinner at the entrance to the city that he worshipped? The Tana Rabbanon, the rabbis taught, She'arecha. It says that uh, you take them to your gate. What does it say? Shar Sha'avabo. Atomer is Shar Sha'avabo. We know all Shar Sha'nidim. It was the gate where they worshipped or the gate where they where they were judged. Nemer Sha'arecha Oma'atov. Nemer Sha'arecha Oma'atov. It says it. Um, uh, it says it below and it says it above with respect to the Nara Murasa and with respect to idolatry.
Abba, in both cases, it's the city. So we're going to say in both cases, it's the city where he did the sin. So you 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 stone them in your gate and not the gates of the idolater. Where it says, Hi hi fifta. We already use this. We already use this to teach us in the gate of the city that you worship. How can we use it now to teach us in the gate of the city, but not the city of the idolaters? Not the gate of the idolaters, where the majority are idolaters. Because Mar says, in crane, lame across shar, my sharecha. Why did I say sharecha? I could have just said shar. Shema me not tired. We see from here both, both, both explanations. So now we see that this is the source for the idea of the idolatry. That, that he's stoned in the city that he worshipped, and also that it's oh, and also at the gate of the beds. And if the majority of the people are idolaters, not our how do we know by not our and if the witnesses came and they said she committed adultery and they came after she was married? And how do we know this law? We learn it out. We learn it out from the word Pesach. Pesach appears in place, both places. Mishar, Shar, Mishar, Recha. So we learn out in both places. Tanar Abana, and so the rabbis taught, Hamotzi Shemra, woke Evanosin, Meosela. So if somebody says libel about his wife, that she was adulteress, he has to get lashes and he has to pay 100. Rabbi Udomer, Wilkos, Woke. He says, to get lashes, whether or not he first had relations with her or not, he gets the lashes. However, to get to 100, then Baal, then if he had the intercourse with her, no sin. Then he gives the 100. But if he didn't, then he doesn't give the money. So, it's about the same dispute of Rebbe and Yaakov and Rabban, and this is the dispute. Hamotzi Shema, that one who spreads the the libel, Wokev and Ose Mea Sala Ben Bal Ben Shalom Bal Kirabanan. The Rabbanan say that one who spreads the libel, whether or not he was Boel, he had the intercourse or not, he gives the one hundred sellers. Rabbi Yehuda says, Wokos Woka Mikomakom. That to get the lashes, he always gets it. But the mea sella, but the 100 sella, bal nas, no sing, well, bal ain't no sing. That only if he had the intercourse, he, he will he give the 100 sella. Whereas Karebel Ezra ben Yaakov, and that's like Karebel Ezra ben Yaakov. Okay, we'll stop here. Everybody should have a good Shabbos, a good Shabbos, a shkoyach.